And my name is Michelle Hamilton. I'm the Director of Public History at the University of Western Ontario. Public history is history understood by and communicated to the public. It comes in various forms, such as museum and archival exhibits, in historical film and television, uh, at historical sites and national parks, and also on the internet. Western's Public History program has three main advantages. The first one is that our program is 12 months, and that includes a three-month internship. We prepare our students for the job market much faster than any other program in Canada. Our second advantage is how we merge the theoretical and the practical together. In all of our courses, we pair with community institutions uh, to produce hands-on projects. This way, students come out of their coursework with significant work experience. For instance, in 2008 and 2009, our students paired with Museum London, the Western Archives, and the former Museum of the London Asylum for the Insane. And we created a virtual web exhibit on the history of mental health care in, in Ontario. In 2009, we worked with the London Advisory Committee on Heritage and the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario to research and make policy recommendations for the heritage designation of a historic area in London. In 2010, we are working with EcoKids, which is a nonprofit environmental program, and the Network in Canadian History and the Environment to design curriculum that merge ecological themes with uh, the social studies curriculum in the province. Our third advantage is our emphasis on digital history. Public historians need to be comfortable in the digital realm. Museums and archives and heritage institutions require a presence on the web and they increasingly use technology to make their collections accessible. Students learn the, the basics of digital work, such as digitizing text, audio, and images, and they also build new platforms containing historical materials, such as interactive whiteboards and microcontroller-based exhibits. The students maintain a professional web blog to establish a professional online reputation. They also learn the basics of XML, HTML, and CSS, and also examine the interpretation of history on the internet. Digital history will continue to be very important to us at Western. We have received $150,000 to create a historical data centre and through this centre we will be able to increase students' opportunities to learn new technologies such as GIS, data mining and 3D modelling. Um, I'm Rebecca Rahe. I am a master's student here at Western in public history. Hands down, the best part of this program is the digital history class that we all have to take. We started talking about things like the Infinite Archive and the kind of the challenges of the internet age and of archiving in an internet age and what we can do with the stuff that's available. And the reality is is that it's such a broad, broad concept that it's pretty much whatever we make of it. I think more than anything that digital class is what we have as an advantage. I think it's what really differentiates the program. Uh, well, my name is Tim O'Grady. Um, I'm a student at uh, Western's public history program. One of the really good things actually about Western is, and, and this program specifically, is it lets you get out into the community. Um, I did an oral history uh, project for Fanshawe Pioneer Village, which is the local uh, living heritage museum here. Uh, and what I did was I went and I, I interviewed uh, three people that are associated with the building that has recently been moved to the site. Um, which worked great for me because I'm really interested in built heritage. It makes a difference to the community because they're taking the content that I've, I've given to them. I, I made CDs for the participants and for the uh, museum. Um, and they're able to use this and, and actually use it for interpretation and put it in their research files. So it's making an actual difference in the community, which is great. I'm getting beyond the classroom and actually doing things that are going to help. When classes are done at the end of April, I'm going back home to Alberta, uh, to Edmonton, to work for the provincial government uh, as my internship. Uh, and once that internship is over, I hope to continue working in the built heritage sector, um, whether it's with a uh, local museum in Edmonton, um, with government, uh, provincial, municipal, uh, Parks Canada would, uh, would be a great option for me. Uh, there's a whole variety of things that you can do with this degree. Um, it, it's really wide open. Uh, my name is Maggie Nelligan and I graduated the public history program in 2009. After graduation, I moved on to a contract position digitizing a collection at RMHCL um, with their former Archives and Teaching Learning Centre. Uh, from there I've started work uh, with the London Heritage Council. Uh, currently, I'm the Heritage Portal Coordinator. I think the public history program, uh, one of the big strengths for me was 
an introduction to a whole variety of different skills. Uh, my skill set going in was very academic based and coming out of it, I can really grab onto a lot of things that I actually tangibly did firsthand. Uh, throughout my internship as well, I was able to be exposed to a whole variety of different environments and working with different professionals along the way, uh, which really helped me transition into the workforce. And my experience with the internship program was an extremely positive one. I came out of it with a huge number of skills uh, that I went in knowing the theoretics behind, but didn't actually have hands-on experience with. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with a number of professionals, ranging all the way from city planners uh, to industrial archaeologists to archival and museum specialists. This program would be great for a student who's looking for an extra level of preparation prior to entering the workforce and really advancing their skill set um, with practical, hands-on learning. I'm Michael Dove. I'm the internship coordinator for the Public History Program here at Western. The Public History Internship consists of 12 weeks of full-time work, uh, which may be paid or unpaid, and can essentially take a student wherever he or she wishes to go in the public history field. Uh, now, naturally, we assist the student in choosing an internship that uh, best suits his or her particular interests, uh, skill set, and career path. The internship is the capstone of the Public History Program. Uh, it enables students to apply uh, the theories, uh, the marketable skills uh, that they've learned over the course of the year uh, to real life public history work settings. So working under the, uh, the, the mentorship of an experienced public history professional, uh, students further explore the broad field of public history. They network with other professionals who are in that very valuable experience to prepare them for the job market upon graduation. There are a broad range of internship possibilities for students. We've had interns working uh, locally and nationally at institutions both large and small. Uh, these have included archives, art galleries, museums, uh, historical societies, media and consulting companies. Geographically, we've had students working uh, in just about every province and territory in Canada. We've had students working in the United States. And of course, we have several students who take full advantage of the uh, tremendous opportunities that are available locally here in London and southwestern Ontario. Our Western alumni have uh, found great success in institutions across North America. Some of our graduates are at the National Archives in Ottawa, the Alberta Museums Association, the Ontario Genealogical Society, the Historica Dominion Institute in Toronto, and of course at various museums and archives across Canada.